Hi everybody, it's Thomas here from thomasfitzgeraldphotography.com. Today I want to discuss um, the new features that were added in the latest beta version of Irradiant X Transformer. Now, if you have my X Transformer guide, um, I will be updating it as soon as possible with uh, details of the new features. But just to get you up to speed, I wanted to create this little video. And uh, if you don't have my guide, then um, this video will still apply to you because you can see uh, what the new features are anyway um right so let's dive right into it and uh, the newest beta is beta 4 and it added a couple of significant new features for the software um in particular there are two things that are new that you may find really useful um first of all they've added a Lightroom plugin which allows you to send files to the software much easier than the way they used to do it um, and, and it works much better and secondly they have added a very useful feature that lets you use the film simulation profile that you shot with when you took the picture and it translates that into a Lightroom color profile okay so let's dive right in and I will show you what the new features are Okay, so first of all, when you install it, uh, you have the option of installing a Lightroom plugin. Um, and let me just switch over to the software here for the moment. And if to do that, you actually get it from the help menu and install Lightroom plugin. Um, and once you do that, over in Lightroom, you now have in the plugin extras menu, you have two new. Um, entries under the Irradiant X Transformer heading. The first is launch for settings changes. Well, actually, it's second in the menu, but you should use this first. <laughs> and then there's the main one, which will actually send your files. So this one here, launch for settings changes, this is really useful because uh, if you've used X Transformer a lot, you know that you have to set, set your settings before you send the images to it. And this just gives you a quick way to quickly launch th the application. So if you don't have it in your dock or in the Windows Start Bar or a shortcut in your desktop and you want a quick way to find it, this is this is a very useful feature. So uh, launch for settings changes. Okay, so I'm going to set up my settings first. Um, uh, and uh, again, if you have my guide, I'm basing these on um, one of recipe one. Um, it's, it may not be exactly recipe one. Um, I sometimes change things up depending on the image. So again, you can this the recipes in the guide are just guidelines, and uh, sometimes I change things up a little. Um, but basically, this is based on recipe one. Um, so I have my raw process set to smoother, sharpening set to non, noise reduction off, and color noise reduction set to low. Okay, so they're all the older features, so none of that's changed. Um, I'm gonna use this as metadata for change. Okay, so I switch over here to DNG options. Okay, and the new feature is down here. Um, translate film mode to Lightroom camera profile. So what this does is this will basically um, I'm going to delete these, sorry. <laughs> what this does is basically it looks at the, the metadata of the file and it finds what you used in camera. So say if you shot across in camera, this will apply the across uh, color profile in Lightroom. Again, if you shot Velvia in camera, this will apply the Velvia camera profile and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, oh, this is new as well. Um, but I'm not going to get into that here because it's a little bit complicated. Um, it's the default camera profile. It uses, uh, it, it gives you the option of using Irradiant Standard, which will more closely match Irradiant Developer, if you're familiar with that. Um, but you're going to use the color profiles anyway, so we're not going to worry about that for the minute. Um, okay, so I have my options set. I'm going to switch back over to Lightroom. Okay, so I've created a selection of images here. Um, I've just selected some of these from a recent shoot. And I've imported these with set to nothing, I do believe. Let me just check. So yeah, so the profile set on Adobe Standard because I'm not going to use, uh, when I imported these, I haven't set the color profile. Okay, and that's important, um, and you'll see why in a minute, because it's going to take the color profile from what I actually shot with. So uh, I have this, I'd have set to nothing when I imported, I didn't use any import preset or anything like that. Okay, so I'm gonna select all the images and I'm going to go to plugin extras and process selected RAFs to DNG. So this will send the images 
to Radiant X Transformer and begin process them. Now, what it does is, and this may frighten you at first, is it actually does it one at a time. Um, the first time I ran this, I was I didn't know what was going on. I thought, oh, it's only done one image, but it actually does each image and then sends each one back. Um, so when you first do it, it can kind of be a bit confusing. Um, but yeah, don't worry, it does actually process lots of images. So if you're doing a batch, it will do it. One of the other things I've noticed about it, and it's, uh, I don't know whether it's a bug or a feature, um, but it will keep bringing the X Transformer window to the front. Now, this is on a Mac. I don't know if this will do the same thing on Lightroom, uh, or sorry, on on a PC. Um, but at the moment, uh, it's kind of a minor inconvenience because you can't really do anything else So if, while you're uh, waiting for the images to process. So even if I was to go back to Lightroom and attempt to do something, um, if you just watch here, it'll bring the window back to the front. See what I mean? So that wasn't me doing that, um, that just does that by itself. So every time it sends a new image to it, it brings the X Transformer window to the front, which can be a little bit of a pain if you've got a huge amount of images that you're processing and you um, and you want to go off and do something else while they're processing, you, you can't really read it, just leave it um, or you'll be very frustrated. So in the case of batch processing lots and lots of images, I still suggest doing it manually rather than using the plugin because of the simple fact that it will keep bringing the window to the front and it will keep interrupting you if you're trying to use your computer for something else. Okay, so this should be nearly done now. Uh, I think there's a few more images to go. Um, Okay, so we've switched back now. And as you can see straight away, this looks different than what I had previously. So this is the process DNG, and this was the RAF. So the RAF brought in with just the default Adobe profile, and this used the profile I shot with at the time, which I'm pretty sure by looking at it is Valvia. Yep, so you can see it's Valvia. And so over here again, this is the RAF, and that was nothing. And then the DNG file now has the Provia uh, applied to it because that's what I shot with in camera. Um, this is a very, very useful feature. And um, there is a plugin for Lightroom that will do this to RAFs without having to convert to DNGs. But if you're using X Transformer anyway, this is uh, a really useful feature. Um, and you don't have to use this in conjunction with the with the plugin either. This will work uh, just using X Transformer standalone. So uh, you don't have to worry about that. If, you, if you're still doing the normal batch processing just by uh, on imports, um, then yeah, you, it doesn't really matter. Again, this time I shot this with Astia. Okay, and then there's the RAF with no profile applied. Again, this was Valvia. Again, Valvia. When I was taking these, I was deliberately <laughs> choosing lots of different profiles so I could show you this working. Um, and again, there is the finished result. Okay, and then compared to the RAF. So you probably can't see that in the video, but the quality is actually that much better as well. So um, in terms of image quality, the, he hasn't made any changes between beta 3 and beta 4. So uh, I don't think there's any changes there. Um, I will be upgrading, updating my guide shortly. The plan is to add um, details of these new features um, in the next iteration of the guide. And then after that, I'm going to do a big update when I'll be adding some new recipes and uh, some additional new features. Um, yeah, and that's about it. Um, one other thing I wanted to show you, um, which I think you might find interesting as well, is um, let me just pick an image first. So I'm going to use one of the DNGs that I've just converted. And previously somebody had written to me about using uh, a Radiant X Transformer in conjunction with uh, MacFun's Luminar. Um, and the previous versions, there was a small problem with this um, in that you ended up with some weird kind of color highlights. Uh, the, there was like a, a error in it. Um, and we don't know whether it was to do with the way the files are being created, but it seems to be resolved in the latest version. 
and you can actually get some quite good results by using the DNGs with Luminar. Um, so let me just show you that quickly. So I need to go to plugin extras and where are we? I have too many plugins. Transfer to Luminar. So this will just take a second. Okay, so one of the things to note is it ignores the color profiles. So uh, if you want to use the default profiles, of course, that's not going to work. But I would use this more kind of a, as a as a different way of processing rather than um, trying to match the color profiles. Um, I have created a preset. I think you should be able to find this on my blog somewhere. Um, and it's a bit over the top. But anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to do too much here because I just want to just give you a rough idea of what you can do. Um, in fact, I'm going to reset that. I'm going to apply this instead. Okay. And do, 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 do. And tone. All the way to the top. Exposure down because it was a bit overexposed. Highlights, yeah, smart tone. Again, there's lots you can do in this. This is just I'm just showing you that it actually it seems to work properly now, um, and you can get some nice results with this as well. Um, so as you can see, there's lots of detail retained, uh, and mostly because this is baked into the DNG file now. Um, but yeah, that's just an example of you, you can use this in combination with uh, Luminar. Okay, so I can just hit apply to get back out of this. One of the things I will note that if you do want to use it with Luminar, um, I what I would do is in X Transformer, I would set the lens corrections to apply to image. So this will bake them in because Luminar doesn't currently support uh, lens corrections. Um, although I do believe it is coming to a future version. Uh, if you use this, this will solve that problem. So, it, because they'll be baked into the DNG file. I will be adding details of using Luminar and some other software um, to a future version of my guide as well. It's not going to be in the next edition, but it should be in the edition after that. Um, I have quite a hectic writing schedule ahead, so uh, as soon as I get to it, I will have it in the in the book. Um, but yeah, so that's the edited version. Um, and again, there's the unedited version. Again, it's not necessarily anything you couldn't do in uh, Lightroom as it is, um, but I was just wanted to show you that it does actually work quite well. Um, Anyway, I hope you found that useful, and uh, if you haven't seen my guide before and you want to check it out, you can find it on my store, and the link will be in the, the description below. And uh, thanks for watching, and um, see you next time.